So after making my last video about freelancing websites and I realized <laughs> it's way worse than I thought. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why Upwork is trash, I'm gonna talk about why freelancer.com is trash, and why Fiverr is also trash. But we're not just gonna leave it there, okay? I'm gonna give you the solution of what I would do because you guys kept asking me, well, what's the best freelancing website? And the answer is there, there isn't one. One doesn't exist. You just go to your regular job sites and you look for contract jobs. And I'll show you how to do it at the end of the video. So stick around for that. So the main issue that I have with Upwork is that you have to pay money to apply to a job. On top of, they're already getting money when you complete the job. They take 20% if it's $500 and below. If it's $500 to $10,000, they take 10%. And if it's over $10,000, it's 5%. And that's not like your total money that you've earned on the platform. That's like per client. In my last video, I said that you get free connects. If you don't know what connects are, it's Upwork's digital currency that they used. Every job on Upwork used to be between zero and two connects. So some jobs were free to apply to, in addition to you getting some free connects every single month. But now they've removed all free connects since May, 2017, and they've raised the prices that it takes to apply to a job. So every job will now cost you 15 cents to 90 cents to apply. Never in my life have I had to pay money to apply to any of the jobs that I've had. Just, just think about that. You're paying money to do a job and then they take your money when you're done with the job. Just let that, just let that sink in for a minute. This isn't like a college entrance application where you have to pay 20 bucks and then you get into college. This is a freelancing contract job website. There's an article from monster.com about career advice and avoid work from home job scams. This is what they say. Any job that requires you to pay a fee to get the job should be an immediate red flag. This same concept of having to pay to be able to apply to a job extends to other websites like The Ladders. If you don't know what The Ladders are, it's a job listing site for six figure jobs and up and you have to pay money to be a member of the ladder so that you can apply to these exclusive jobs. It's the same with Flex Jobs. Flex Jobs is a website where you have to pay money so that you can get the exact description of the job and the company so that you can apply. Now, they'll show you the job postings, but they'll be very vague. They won't tell you the company name, they won't tell you the pay, and they won't let you apply to it unless you pay money to be a member to these websites. And here's something I'd like you to realize. Most, if not all, of the jobs posted on the ladders and flex jobs can be found for free and applied to for free on other websites. Here's an example. I actually looked one up from flex jobs. So if we look at this, just some generic, doesn't give you too many details, signal R and service integration. And it says five plus years experience and location, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm gonna go to Indeed and I put signal R, Charlotte, North Carolina, right in here. So I'm gonna click senior software engineer I looked through the rest of them. There weren't that many options, but, and if you look over here, it says five plus years professional software experience. Right here, you can see it requires Signal R, but it doesn't say anything about remote. So I was like, huh, that's kind of odd. Does LendingTree even offer remote positions? So I typed in LendingTree remote jobs into Google, and I see senior marketing manager, SEM, LendingTree, anywhere. And this is from the ladders. So you can't actually apply to this unless you pay to be on the ladders because it's above six figures, 150. So I can basically guarantee that this position right here, senior software engineer, is this job right here on Flex Jobs. But you'd have to pay to, to figure that out. So this job has been cross posted to a million different places and Flex Jobs just picks up the ones that could be remote and hides them from you and you can pay to see it. In my last video, I said, if I was gonna work on Upwork, after I was done with the job, I would message that person and say, if you wanna do any more jobs, let's do it outside of Upwork. You can't do that. And if they find you asking for personal details like Skype names or emails or usernames for other places so that you can communicate outside the platform, you're breaking their terms of service. If you do that without opting out, which is a feature they have that they don't talk about, they can sue you and terminate your account. With respect to Upwork, when a client finds a freelancer on our website, they agree to keep the relationship on Upwork either for 24 months, that's two years, or until they pay an opt-out fee. This means that during this time, all payments and transactions between the client and freelancer must go through Upwork under the table payments aren't allowed. 
In fact, paying someone outside of the Upwork platform is considered circumvention, something you agree not to do when you accept the terms of service. If you breach that agreement, you may be charged the opt-out fee and removed from Upwork. If you haven't been doing business with one client for two years on Upwork, you cannot go outside the platform and work with them, or you pay the opt-out fee. Oh, well, what's the opt-out fee, Josh? It's $3,500. You have to pay Upwork $3,500 to be able to work with the client outside of the platform. And if they catch you doing it, they'll just charge you $3,500. And if you don't pay it, they'll sue you. It's, a, it's kind of a joke, but Upwork can also remove your account for any reason. It's very subjective. They don't have to tell you what you did. In fact, I received an email from a viewer saying his account got terminated due to malicious activity. It's important for Upwork to ensure a professional platform that helps freelancers and clients connect and get work done. Following report of unusual site activity, we reviewed your account and have determined you are not using Upwork for permitted purposes as provided in the terms of service. As such, we are closing your account effective immediately. He replies, I've never done anything malicious or with the intent of cheating or bending your rules. I was looking forward to that. I would in time become a full freelancer on Upwork. That's my life dream. And I believe it's unfair to be cast out like this without even an explanation. And they said, thank you for contacting Upwork. We regret any disappointment this decision may cause. We sincerely appreciate your desire to continue working with us. However, based on the report we have, we won't be able to reinstate your account. Unfortunately, I cannot share more specifics regarding our reviews for privacy and security purposes. But please know that before action is taken, an intensive review was conducted first. I do understand that this is not the outcome you are expecting. We sincerely wish you all the best in your future freelancing career. Imagine building your entire career on Upwork, building clients that you're not supposed to know the name or email of anyway, so I guess it wouldn't matter. But imagine having a reputation and reviews and a good score and being in the preferred program and they just remove it because of report. Some guy said that, hey, you're not using your account. He asked me for my email and boom, gone. Years, gone. I saw some comments that said, Upwork is good. You just don't know how to use it. I've made X amount of money on Upwork and it's good that you're making this video discouraging other people from not using Upwork because that means less competition. There's a few issues here. How do you get good at Upwork? Do you just spam out jobs and hope that you just, you get a few or do you take some crappy jobs and just suck it up? and then hope to get some good reviews for it? Is that how it works? You have to build your reputation a little bit, right? Everyone's like, I get private offers for $100, $200 an hour. <laughs> Actually, you don't. You get offers for $80 an hour because they take 20%. I'm not quite sure how you get started on Upwork or how you use it better than others without already having a great reputation. When you're just starting out, like most of us, and most of the people watching this video looking to get into freelancing, you're not gonna have your reputation. You're not gonna have years of work experience. You're probably not going to get privately invited to jobs. But the fact is, you're still paying money to apply to jobs. They're still taking money. And if you go outside, it costs money. It's all about the money. So it costs between 15 cents and 90 cents to apply to a job. And who knows how many jobs it's gonna take before you actually get a job that works out and that is decent. So, you know, that could be 20, 30 bucks. And they charge between 20% and 5% and there's an opt-out fee of $3,500. There's a 3% processing fee. That's a lot of ways for a job site to take your money. I really, really don't want to say it, but I think that Upwork is worse than working with recruiters <laughs> because Upwork cuts into your money. They take 20% or 10% or 5% on top of making you pay to apply to the job. At least working with a recruiter they add on to the salary and just take off the top. So if you get more money, they get more money. But on Upwork, it's, it's the opposite. <laughs> you get less money, they get more money. You thought I was done, um, but I said, I'm, we're gonna take a look at freelancer.com too. Freelancer.com is, it's a different freelancing website. It's kind of like Upwork, but it has a different payment model. Freelancer.com doesn't charge you money to apply to the jobs. So that's kind of nice, I guess, but they do take a percentage of your money. So on freelancer.com, they have these things called projects, which are one-off things. It's 10%. So if you do a project, they take 10% off the top. If you do a service, I don't know if they should just call it a job, basically an ongoing service where you work for a client indefinitely. It's not a job on freelancer.com. It's called 
a service, they take 20%. Freelancer.com has these things called bidding fees. You can pay money to Freelancer.com to make your application stand out. So the employer will look at the job and go, oh wow, they paid an extra $10. So they must be dedicated to this job. I don't know how they've convinced people that's a win. They also have these things called uh, highlighting your bid. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the website called Twitch, but if you ever look at Twitch chat, which I recommend you don't because it's pretty bad, <laughs> but you'll see highlighted messages. You know, you hope that the streamer sees your highlighted messages and then he has a better chance of like responding to you. It's the same thing on freelancer.com. The exact same thing. <laughs> you can pay a dollar to highlight your bid. So when the employer goes to look at all the people that have bid on the site, they can see that yours is highlighted. Oh, wow, that's, that's fantastic. Upwork has its own circumvention thing where you can't go outside the platform and you can't ask for personal details like emails and Skype usernames and stuff. Well, freelancer.com has that as well. Unless you have a prior relationship with a user, you must only communicate with users via freelancer.com. You must not and must not attempt to communicate with other users through any other means, including but not limited to email, telephone, Skype, ICQ, AIM, MSN Messenger, that's still a thing. We may read all correspondence posted to the website and download or access and test all uploaded files, programs, and websites related to your use of the website for the purpose of investigating fraud, regulatory compliance, risk management, and other related purposes. That's pretty next level there. So if you're sending over some files to a client, they can download those files and look through them. <laughs> like you could have bank account information in there, you could have social security information in there, you could have all kinds of personal information in the files that you're delivering to a client and freelancer.com says, you know what, we can download that and we can look through it to investigate to see if you've asked for usernames or telephone numbers. There's not even a limitation on this. They don't specify. There's no opt-out fee. There's nothing. You just can't do it forever. That's it. That's freelancer.com. All right, next up we're doing Fiverr. You offer your services to clients but clients have to pay for your services or kind of apply to you. It's an inverse business model of Upwork and Freelancer. Instead of you as the freelancer going to them, people have to come to you and they want to buy your services. They still take 20% of your money and 20% of your tips. So Upwork doesn't offer tips, so they don't take your money there. And Freelancer.com doesn't offer tips, they don't take your money there. Just something to note really quick here. When I was looking up information on Fiverr, when I typed in Fiverr, fees, the official Fiverr fee page wouldn't come up. It's not on the first page of the search results. It's not on the second page of the search results. I had to go to finder.com, which has a description of the Fiverr service, which tells you the fees. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find it. When you Google it, you can't find it. One of my major issues with Fiverr here is that they take your tips. Okay, you want to take 20% of my money because it's your platform and you built it, great. But you want to take 20% of my tips? Come on, man. That's like... That's scummy. That's just really scummy and, and just a terrible thing to do. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you tip the waiter or the waitress and then the restaurant takes it for themselves. But you can get tipped on Uber and Uber doesn't take your tips, okay? People complain about Uber all the time, but at least, at least they don't take your tips. They may not pay the greatest, but at least they don't take your tips. And you say, hey, you know, if you wanna tip me, please don't do it through Fiverr. Again, circumvention. You cannot go outside of Fiverr and ask them, to donate outside. Nope, they get all 20% of your tips. Requesting or providing email addresses, Skype, IM, usernames, telephone numbers, or any other personal contact details to communicate outside of Fiverr in order to circumvent or abuse the Fiverr messaging system or Fiverr platforms is not permitted. You can't use it to just build up a little reputation and then go outside of Fiverr. You can't do it. It's not allowed. I'm pretty sure that they scan your messages. All these platforms, I'm pretty sure. I mean, freelancer.com is open about it. They just directly, yeah, we can download your stuff. We read your messages. There's really just Big Brother 24-7. Upwork, they don't specify, but I assume that there's a clause somewhere in the terms of service where they can do the exact same thing. And, and same for Fiverr here. These three platforms are obviously not good. You, you'd be settling with yourself, I think, to, to have to use these platforms because I thought maybe it'd be good to just build a little reputation, get some clients, you know, and then and take that elsewhere. Not allowed to do it. All right, so what's the solution? As I said at the beginning of the video, I was gonna show you what I would do to find a contract job or a, a freelance job, if that's what you guys wanna call it. And for Fiverr, I would tell you what I would do. So let me show you exactly what I would do and, and what to look for. So let's jump in real quick. You wanna type in developer or whatever your job is. Come over here on the left, see job type. 
full-time, contract, part-time, internship, temporary. 10 openings, so 10 contract positions for this. These are all companies. You can negotiate your hourly pay. Doesn't cost any money to click this apply button right here. There's no circumvention. Let's do it with Stack Overflow. You wanna come over here, click this button, click jobs. So if you come over here and you click background, just click contract. Again, freelance positions. Let's do another one. You can do job status, full-time, part-time. Click part-time. Part-time jobs are most likely to be contract. See, duration, 12 months, contract job. Duration, long-term project. So could be a year, could be two years, could be three years, could be six months, we don't know. This is a freelance position. So there is no best freelance website. That's just not, it's just not a thing. Just use regular job sites. The ones I showed here are fine. You can use other ones like uh, LinkedIn has jobs. Glassdoor has jobs. You can also search contract there. I can imagine that some of these jobs that are post on, posted on freelancer.com or Upwork are also posted on Indeed. Like I showed you before with flex jobs, these jobs are cross posted everywhere. So when you see a recruiter posting on Indeed, you can almost be guaranteed that job is on every single job site that exists. They want maximum exposure so that they can get the best candidates so that they can get the most money. Fiverr's kind of business model, I'll tell you what I did. I went on Reddit, the YouTube subreddit, and I said, hey, does anyone need a lower thirds? And if you don't know what a lower thirds is, it's the little thing that slides out the bottom left or the bottom right of the video when you first start watching it or when like there's a person being interviewed or something. And I said, does anyone need this? I'll make one for your channel. I'll do it for free. Now I know what you're thinking. Josh, you say never to work for free. That, that is true. I do say that. The only exception I would ever make to working for free is when you're doing it to benefit your own brand and your own reputation. A few people accepted. There's a couple gamer YouTubers that accepted. And my name is credited in their YouTube description for their lower thirds. So now when I, if I wanted to offer the services, I could say, hey, look, I built his lower thirds, I built his lower thirds, I edited his video, you can see credits everywhere. They don't need to know if you got paid or not. Why do you need to tell them that? They don't need to know. But you have reputation, you have proof. You got proof in the pudding right there. And then if you wanted to go on Fiverr later, you'd have a reputation. But that's how all of this works. I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully it has, if it has, Click subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think down in the description. I'm working on some courses, they should be out. I'm gonna launch them with a Black Friday sale. So Grindr Academy, if you wanna check those out. I appreciate you guys, thanks for being here and I'll see you guys in the next one.